How many men, women, and children must die in Gaza to equal one Israeli soldier? One? Two? How about 500? This was the logic framed by CNN over the weekend with a report that a single Israeli soldier had allegedly been captured by Hamas, which has governed the Gaza Strip since 2007 after it won a majority of seats in the Palestinian parliament. One. That's the answer. One Israeli soldier. That's compared to over 500 and counting dead civilians in Gaza, men, women, and children since the Israeli invasion of Gaza began. At this point, I am absolutely convinced that the downed Malaysian airliner in Ukraine, flight MH17, is somehow inexplicably linked to the Israeli attack on Gaza and further destabilization of the Middle East and the Ukraine. In our last video, The Mystery of Flight MH17, I go over this in detail. You can watch the video in full by clicking on the link in the description box below. Even if flight MH17 isn't directly linked to Gaza, it is still being used as a smokescreen for war. And even if flight MH17 isn't a typical false flag event, the Gulf of Tonkin or Operation Northwoods, both undeniable and declassified historical examples of false flags, it is being used by the mainstream media and global governments as a means to an end in the agenda for war and destabilization of this part of the world. It is also being used to demonize Putin. As Senator Dianne Feinstein pointed out over the weekend, the U.S. is now at Cold War levels with Russia. Oh goody, how convenient. Shouldn't we all get under our desks now and brace for a nuclear attack? Israel has been planning an attack on Gaza, the US, Russia, and Obama readying to capitalize on all of this for some time now. As his wingman, pro-war and defender of Israel, Vice President Joe Biden quipped earlier, he looked into Putin's eyes and just didn't think he had a soul. Like you do, Joe? Why is the United States positioning for a new Cold War with Russia? And what is the potential motive? How is the downing of Flight MH17 in Ukraine linked? Could it perhaps be the formation of the BRICS nations for a competitor bank to the long Western dominated World Bank and International Monetary Fund? Is that why the IMF recently approved a $17 billion bailout for the recently toppled Ukraine? Is Ukraine a chess piece? Does an initial $50 billion investment by the BRICS nations and its new World Bank, soon to be operational in 2016, make the U.S. nervous? I thought we promoted competition here. As illustrated by Time Magazine in a recent report, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, otherwise known as the BRICS, don't like a US dollar denominated world reserve currency. They've been kneecapped by it for far too long, not to mention sponsored wars and bankrupted nations around the world. So naturally they are planning a breakaway, a fresh start from the US and European inspired money launder and debt monster that makes up these institutions and are planning a new one all on their own. According to insiders in Washington, D.C. and on Wall Street, this is a real game changer for the West. With the announcement of a new development bank headquartered in Shanghai to be operational in 2016, the BRICS nations are threatening the very existence and the monopoly on international finance and indentured servitude Western banks have enjoyed arguably for far too long. It thus makes perfect sense why the Obama administration, a representative not of the people, but of too big to fail banks and giant multinational corporations, is actively campaigning to demonize Putin and all things Russian. Ironically, the American people have Russia and Putin to be thankful for more in recent years than they do Obama or the United States government. Putin's asylum of American patriot and truth teller Edward Snowden, just one notable example. Snowden's leak of a vast illegal and anti-constitutional wiretapping and surveillance program here in the United States is arguably the biggest story and the largest example of Washington corruption and overreach this century. It highlights the anti-constitutional sewer pit that makes up Washington, D.C. today. But remember, Putin is the enemy here. Not only is the West demonizing Putin, but they are also actively campaigning for the demonization of rising China and its allies. They're communists, remember? They oppress their people, like bank bailouts, quantitative easing, Obamacare, and spying on American citizens is anything representative of a capitalist or free society. The new development bank set to launch in two years' time will also have a twin, just like the World Bank. This twin, the equivalent of the Western-inspired International Monetary Fund, will provide short-term emergency loans to participating countries, really just long-term and perpetual debt obligations of its member states. Like the World Bank and IMF today, this will provide tremendous power to the BRICS. It will strengthen the ruble, the renminbi, and any other BRICS-backed currency or digital equivalent, and likely collapse the U.S. dollar. But of course, this has been the point since the very beginning. Global engineering of a global currency and a new world order. 
engineer bank bailouts, financial stimulus, and giant wealth transfers from the middle class, the poor, to the rich has only helped the collapse along the way. And now it's coming to fruition. A new baby is being born, and it's not the United States. Meet your new parents, Russia and China. Hope you speak Chinese. I'm Christopher Green, and you've been tuning into AMTV, alternative media television. Hard hitting and in your face. Click the link below to support our sponsor, and please share this video everywhere.